Good morning to Dr. Nick and my fellow classmates. I'm from group two, and today my group and I will be presenting about sodium nitrite, which is coded E250. Before I get into it, let me introduce myself and my group mates. My name is Amrit Sai, and my matrix number is 200308. My name is Ahmad Daniel Ahmad Nasir. My matrix number is 200833. My name is Abdul Azim bin Abdullah Halim and my matrix number is 200586. Right, now that we've all introduced ourselves, allow me to get right to our presentation. We will be covering four parts, which consists of firstly, the processed food that we chose. Second, the preservative used in that food. Third, the targeted microorganisms that that preservative inhibits. And lastly, the mechanism in which they target the microorganism. Our group has decided to choose processed meats for this presentation. Processed meats are preserved in several ways, such as curing, salting, smoking, drying, or canning. We will be focusing on cured meats in particular. Processed meats are typically processed to extend its shelf life or improve its taste. Examples of these meats include beef jerky, ham, sausages, lunch meat, and salami. The preservative used in processed meats is sodium nitrite. The picture at the bottom right of the screen shows part of an ingredient list of a local brand of sausages. And as you can see, sodium nitrite is used as a preservative. Sodium nitrite is an inorganic compound and a nitrite salt. In meats, it is used to give that pink shade that we all typically see in processed meats. So it's that pink color that you would associate with a sausage. How nitrite does this is it reacts with meat myoglobin to cause color changes. First, converting to nitrosomyoglobin, which is bright red. Then on heating to nitrosohemochrome, which is a pink pigment. Nitrite also is the cause of the taste that we associate with processed meats. I will now pass the presentation on to Daniel. Thank you, Saiba. Okay, now I will present about targeted microorganisms of sodium nitrite. Okay, firstly, it targets pathogenic bacteria such as Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a gram positive bacterial root shaped anaerobic, which means it does not require oxygen to grow, spore forming, which means it can survive at extreme or harsh environment, mortal bacterium with, with the ability to produce the danger, dangerous toxins, which is uh, botulinum toxins under low oxygen conditions. This means that uh, Clostridium botulinum will produce botulinum toxins uh, at environment with uh, low concentration of oxygen. It is the responsible microorganism that causes botulism. Okay, now I will uh, explain about the effect of Clostridium botulinum. Okay, firstly, botulinum toxins or its short name, Botox. Botulinum toxins or Botox block nerve functions, which, uh, which means uh, it is a type of uh, neurotoxins uh, and it can lead to respiratory and muscular paralysis. Botulism, a type, uh, actually there is a lot of uh, botulism, but we are going to focus on foodborne botulism because we are food scientists. Uh, but, uh, botulism is a serious, potentially fatal disease caused by botulinum toxins, characterized by descending flaccid paralysis that can cause respiratory failure. Uh, the worst uh, case of scenario, it can lead to death. Okay, now I will uh, pass this presentation to Azim. All right, thank you, Daniel. Now I'm going to explain about the mechanism of the inhibition of nitrate on the clostridium botulinum. So before that, um, uh, just for you to know that you know, with the recent series, uh, research, there was there is still no clear uh, mechanism of on how uh, nitrite can inhibit uh, the clostridium botulinum. But there are few uh, postulates or there are few mechanisms that are being proposed by the researchers on how the nitrate can inhibit the clostridium botulinum. So one of uh, one of them is the one I'm going to explain now is that the research done by Leonard Wood, uh, uh, Leonard Woods and his colleagues back in 1981 and 1982. 
So uh, they've made an experiment on the effect of nitrite on the uh, glucose metabolism of the Clostridium botulinum. So they found out that the nitrite caused a large and rapid decrease in the ATP. So how do they know? How do they know there's, there's a rapid decrease of ATP in the Clostridium botulinum? So this is because of increased pyruvate indicates inhibitory action of nitrate in phosphoroclastic system. So phosphoroclast phosphoroclastic system is an important source of ATP in Clostridia. So when they and when they made an inhibitory action in the phosphoroclastic system in the uh, in the uh, Clostridia, so obviously they cannot produce more ATP. Hence, that is why they are, they found out that in addition of nitrite can cause the decrease, a rapid decrease in ATP in Clostridia. So once ATP production drops below a certain threshold value, the ATP pool will be rapidly depleted, which is where the, the moment that uh, it crosses the limit and it will, it will keep, keep on continuing to reduce and reduce and reduce. Uh, and this is inhibition caused by nitric oxide. So uh, the, the formation of nitric oxide complexes with the non-heme ion of pyruvate ferredoxine oxidoreductase. So what do they do? They inhibit the ATP production in the phosphoroclastic plastic system. That's all for the mechanism. I will pass it on to Daniel for the last part. Thank you. Thank you, Azim. To clarify Azim's point, even though Azim said that there is no enough evidence to support this mechanism, but there is a recent research in 2018 that support these mechanisms. Okay, firstly, uh, nitrate in processed beets can inhibit the growth of foodborne pathogens and food spoilage bacteria through various mechanisms, including oxygen uptakes and oxidative phosphorylation. As we know, oxidative phosphorylation uh, is popular for its uh, function uh, to produce ATP. So it's correlated with Azim's point, Azim's first point, right? Okay, uh, the second one is the formation of nitrous acid and uh, nitric oxide can interrupt, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the formation of nitrous acid and nitric oxides and interaction of critical enzyme and bacterial metabolism such as aldolysis. Uh, the second point is also related to Azim's second point. Okay, I think that's all from us. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask Alvin. Thank you. 